What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode seven of In the Moment. Today we are joined by Kelly, and she is experiencing. My neck is sore. My neck is sore. Um, reason I wanted to bring up Kelly is because I went to actually check her system, and I found what I find with a lot of people that a lot of people that are experiencing neck pain isn't because of their neck. A lot of times it's because of their upper back, especially if it's become a chronic issue. And so if you're going to see a chiropractor and you've been seeing them for a while, two, three, four months, and they're adjusting your neck, they may not be adjusting the upper back properly um, and may need to refocus. And so oftentimes what I find uh, is this upper, this upper area, at least it's called like T2, T3, T4, that there's something going on right in the upper part of the shoulder blades and you have to do that as a priority, meaning that you may be doing that and not adjusting the neck because what can happen is if that anchor point is not getting moved properly and you just keep adjusting the neck, the neck is becoming hypermobile while the upper back is staying hypomobile, which means not moving enough. So hyper means moving too much, hypo not moving enough or less than. Um, so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check her out and then we're going to see where we need to do adjust and make that adjustment and then check back in see how you're doing. Ready? Go face down for me. All right. So Kelly is actually a lovely uh, assistant here at the Source Chiropractic. So for those of you that will be making your way here to Oakland, California, you'll be checking in with Kelly at the front and she'll be getting you hooked up and scheduled up. Um, and you're also from where, Kelly? From South Carolina. From South Carolina. So she got a little bit of that draw. <laughs> so when I'm checking with Kelly, um, again, I'm finding an acre point. It's almost like an X happening, which is interesting because she also has like an X happening, X pattern happening with like the bra that she's wearing, I think. But there is something that's going right here um, at the T3, T4 level. And so what I feel is I, so in the swipe, so you might be watching these videos for a little bit now. What you'll notice is I do like, swipes and it's not always like big motion palpation. What I'm reading is that superficial layer of fascia and then sinking the sonar even deeper to what's going on uh, at lower and lower levels. Now in the beginning of first starting to do work with people, you want to do everything. You want to do all the special tests, you want to do all the range of motion and again in our office for our initial assessment we do all of those things and as you progress what you'll start to find is that you don't have to do all of those things. What you'll start finding is what I noticed in my sweep or when I did this with my hand and I noticed what I noticed with my, within my hand that I also noticed this uh, type of restriction in this palpation. I noticed this amount of lateral flexion, all of these things. So you start to build building is like a reference map for what do I feel when I do this. So for Kelly, what do I feel like when I do this is I feel a bunching of the myofascial system into this area carrying very, very, very deep. So you have a uh, superficial layer of fascia, then you have uh, like more of a posterior layer than an anterior layer that's um, more near the bodies of the vertebra. This sinks like all the way down into the disc. So this is really more of a disc level T3, T4, you could say subluxation that is causing um, all kinds of dysfunction. And so again, if this is super, super, super tight, and then this is uh, potentially moving too much, that can also cause pain. So it's not always pain being caused by a restriction. It can be, be being caused um, by just dysfunction. Uh, one of my friends, David Rydos, just made a post talking about uh, pain, P-A-I-N, pay attention inside now. That's kind of nice, a little acronym to, to just, just to pay attention, to notice what you notice. And it may not always be what is, uh, what's appearing in front of you or what you think it is. Uh, another uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Walton, he would say, if you step on a cat's tail, it's not the tail that meows, right? So a lot of times people are focusing on the mouth because all of the pain's coming from there, but the tail is the issue. Take the foot off the tail and you might be all right, okay? So uh, what else I'm feeling for Kelly is uh, I also am feeling a right SI fixation. So for Kelly, the two primaries is a right SI fixation and a T3, T4 disc level that we're gonna do while she's laying on her back. So first, let's start with this. Go this side up for me. <clears throat> and face me on your side. Again, these are biotensegrity systems, and so that means that you can get relief in certain areas without ever touching that area. Oh, sweet, on your back. If you watch uh, episode four with uh, my good friend Bill, we did an upper cervical adjustment 
that helped his uh, frozen shoulder, right? So we adjusted C1 and we adjusted rib, but we never touched the glenohumeral joint and then he got another 20 degrees of range of motion in his right shoulder. <clears throat> so with Kelly here, we're gonna focus in at that T3, T4. And so this is actually palpation, right? So this is my motion palpation. I roll the body as a group and then I let the body of the vertebra go back on uh, my fingers here and I'm listening for how it's moving and or not moving. All right, so we're gonna go right here. Go ahead and bend your knees for me. By bending the knees, I can actually get a better connection to the upper back. It unloads the lower back. And now I can do some micro tuning of the shoulders, but I'm noticing she's carrying her right shoulder high. So I'm just gonna bring it here. Again, looking for, to, you know, to steal the lake, bring optimal ease into the system. So I can also just scoot the occiput just away from my contact a little bit more. Actually, bring your chin the other way. There you go. Perfect, right there. Breathe. And uh, <laughs> that one was deep. So that one went so deep, it got a slight flexion of the rib cage, which is where I wanted to go. And so again, if you want to be facet level, be facet level. If you want to work down into the disc, you can go all the way down to the disc. If you want to work to the cord, you can. You just got to change your depth and the amount of impulse that goes into the system. Go back on your stomach. I'm going to recheck that. So again, that was a disc level T3, T4 um, level adjustment. I'm just going to recheck here, checking bots and segregate through the heels. Good pelvis motion. All right, go ahead and go back on your back. I'm going to go ahead and check the neck now. <clears throat> yeah, so her neck's been getting adjusted. The neck feels great. I'm going to leave the neck alone. You can go ahead and sit on up. Face the camera, move your neck around. Does it feel better? Much better. Much better. How much improvement? Oh, man. Zero to 100%. Like 95. 95. 95. I mean, that's not, I mean, I'm cool trying to get another 5%, right? <laughs> but 95% improvement on a sore neck, neck pain from not adjusting the neck, right? So again, it's, it's big to, to fi figure out what are the priorities of the system. How is the whole entire structure or framework being distorted? And then how can you just use, really be as specific as possible and adjust as few areas as possible to get the results that you want to get? And it may not always be where the pain is. Don't focus on the mouth of the cat. Might want to check out that tail. Thanks for joining us for episode seven. We hope to see you next time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Like it, love it, share it, and we'll see you next time.